All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash, it's Hero of Aetheric, and this is my world farming zone guide for Aetheric. We're going to kind of cover uh, the areas on the map, which I recommend for farming at different levels and tiers. Now, before we get into the areas itself, uh, one general piece of advice I will give you is that for farming, uh, for world farming, for experience, the thing you want to be doing most of the time is farming the bosses that you can kill easily. Uh, sorry, killing the highest tier of bosses that you can easily. That means you can kill them in two or three hits uh, later on in the game or at the beginning of the game. You can at least kill them consistently uh, without having, uh, without dying basically. And that may mean on occasion not farming your current tier but a tier or even two tiers below you um, because you basically want to get the experience as fast as possible and if you're killing a tier seven boss but it takes you like two minutes to kill one boss but it might take you only 30 seconds to kill a tier six boss uh, the experience difference between the monsters is not four times as much at tier seven uh, so it does make sense to kill tier 6 monsters. So let's start then. I will have timestamps uh, for each tier. And at tier 1, you want to farm northeast of Loton, the starting area. And the reason for that is you get uh, fallen warriors and fallen mages and fallen thieves here. So you want to get your kind of first weapon uh, of the game. Also, you know, the starting mobs here as well. And okay, bandit lords, minotaur drops a really nice weapon as well. Um, generally, once you leave Loton, Northeast Loton, which is this these barriers here, that is technically the start of the Tier 2 area, but you do have access to that at Tier 1. So you can theoretically travel all the way around the, the Tier 2 area, but it's a bit dispersed. Uh, for, for Tier 1 farming, there's you may want to travel in hopes of finding uh, more mobs, but you can use Party Reset as well. So... See, there you go. The, the, these are the mobs you want to kill, get your weapons early on. Then you can start farming bosses at tier 1 very easily, and even into tier 2. Now, at tier 2, I actually really like the area around the mushroom. Uh, there should be two bosses in this zone, and the cutoff for the zone is just these barriers here at the, at the top right. So you go from these barriers to these barriers, this zone here, two bosses there. I quite like uh, other option you have is like Fen Halls. It's quite a larger area, uh, but you do at least have a way gate there. So if the bosses take you towards the western side of the zone and then you don't see any bosses, you can way gate every three minutes to the eastern side and hopefully you'll have bosses immediately there. So the tier two bosses, relatively, relatively easy to take down, especially once you get your fallen weapon. Uh, you, you should definitely have the capability to take tier bosses, tier two bosses down at tier two itself. Now, into tier three, if you hit tier three immediately and go to farm in Lithrin, you may have some issues with like the demon knight because it, just because it has a lot of health. And the depending on your armor, at this point you do want to wear uh, any kind of armor, like the best armor you have. Uh, tier 3 bosses will start to hit relatively hard. Lost Pharaoh, there's our Lord. Um, but if you can start farming this zone at Tier 3, uh, it's definitely doable uh, with just a fallen weapon. You know, maybe use a couple of whetstones, get it, get your weapon to level 3. Um, the route itself at Tier 3, it's, uh, it's a bit awkward. There's not really uh, one zone here which the bosses mainly spawn. It's like all over the the zone to be honest uh, all the way from the top and then it kind of go they do spawn all the way down round and you get lizard lords spawning in the sea here so tier three it's not too bad you do start to get gauntlet keys from the demon knight so it is a very good place to spawn and uh, you get some nice weapons there so start farming here you know tier three or so and then tier four it's very likely when you reach tier 4, which is level 75, you will not be able to easily farm tier 4 bosses because uh, Orc Lord, tier 4 boss, has bloodlust. It can hit very hard. 
You got the gargoyle, Carmen's gargoyle, which is super annoying, does hit hard as well. It makes you petrified, so you lose a lot of turn economy. And um, those two by themselves are, yeah, a bit of a nightmare. So you may need to spend more time in Lithrin, get your weapons up a little bit, get some, uh, get some gear. Um, but for tier four and for the beginning of tier five, I, I do like the Great Athantia Bridge area. It has wood forest biome, so that means Mimic King can spawn at tier four. Now the Mimic King is like a, an absolutely juicy boss, uh, super high rewards gold experience and orange of course and they can drop some nice gear as well so definitely like this area you get two bosses around here uh the only issue is sometimes you get a boss on the western side of the bridge can be a bit annoying but it's it's very easy to path because you, when if you know a boss is here you go there then you start walking then you attack the boss uh, so it's a very nice area to farm even uh into kind of tier five you can pick up uh you know, your nice tier four weapons, at least for melee classes, there's quite, quite a few options here. Um, and the trolls for the trolls charms as well. Uh, the rest of tier four area, Odin's Finger, is, it is long. Uh, they do have bosses there. Uh, this area here, Woven woven Forest, it's a one boss area. Uh, it's not a bad place because you can, you can sometimes like stand there and get bosses spawning without having to move. But because there's only one boss, you will have to move eventually. And uh, yeah, it's not a bad place here. You've got a way gate there as well. Um, one issue people might have is sometimes bosses spawn like west of the, the mountains here. You can't reach them. And yeah, I mean, I really like it, tier four, to this area around Athantia for sure. So tier four, by the way, does open up into Sedun, uh, the, the Sedun desert area. Don't forget you have your dungeon here. Uh, let's cover the dungeons up until now as well. So the first dungeon you have is the, the Mushroom Dungeon. And you can start going into dungeons at Tier 3. And I really recommend you do so. Uh, just to try and get feel of dungeons. Because completing them gives you nice orns. And you do see um, bosses inside and other monsters. The Demon Knight is the first boss that starts dropping them uh, in Lithrin. Then the second dungeon we have available is actually a Goblin Fortress here. You not too bad to farm stone and you get gold from it as well. So it's definitely worth doing early on and get stone and gold for building up your origin town. Uh, then you get a, a mystic cave, which is the shaded cave here. Uh, again, probably only worth doing uh, to get the orn bonus at the end for completion. It's the stuff inside. Uh, yeah, they are magic based mobs. So if you are a mage, you may want to farm that uh, a bit more. And then you have another Mystic Cave Tier 4, which is in the Sedun Desert. Um, now, the farming Sedun Desert area, you see, is a very big area. Bosses can be kind of dispersed everywhere. It's not great for farming. Definitely check out the Bazaar in Sedun as soon as you can. Very high chance of getting like gear upgrades and stuff because the gear can actually be leveled. So that's super nice. So into Tier 5. Now, there's a very good chance that Tier 5, you, you will still need to be farming Tier 4 bosses. Uh, tier 5 has a couple of pretty heavy hitting bosses. But when you do eventually, when you can eventually uh, take these guys down, this is my preferred area, Sadun Dunes. Um, there's, I think there's two bosses in this zone. And it's not, it's not a big zone though. So sometimes they do spawn in the south, but very often you'll get quite a few spawns back to back. Uh, in this area and you do have a normal dungeon here as well which is it's called walker's tomb or something and uh, next to the way gate as well so uh, that's a very nice area meropis you can see is you know these larger areas uh, the bosses can be there are more bosses but the distance between them is often very very high uh, so that is a tier 5 area but um for my tier 5 farming i recommend yeah western sudun dunes now at tier 5, there's kind of weapon upgrades for all class types. So you will want to pick up a nice tier 5 weapon before moving on to tier 6 area. Um, tier 6, in saying that, the tier 6 bosses uh, in the mountains of Jotunheim, they can be slept dark. So especially if you have a, a hard-hitting pet, you can take them down. Um, now, Ronin, uh, Carmen, very nice. Carmen is very nice, drops a gauntlet key, but 
Mountains of Jotunheim, this is a, an area you will spend a lot of time in. Uh, there's three bosses in this area. In this second area, I think there's a, if there's two bosses, this actually might be very nice as well. When I was farming, there was only one boss, but that might have changed by now. So, so check that. Uh, because if there's two bosses, that's the barrier, and then that's the other barrier. So two bosses in that zone is probably nicer than three bosses here. Although, I, in saying that, a lot of the boss spawns you can reach across these uh, mountains. So for example, if you've got a boss here and a boss here, you can probably reach both of them from the from being in the same point. Uh, especially if you are playing on blue stacks and you can actually see across the mountains. That is a definite advantage. But generally this route is, you know, this tier six is it's not a bad route, actually, because you tend to go up and round, up and round. Every once in a while you'll get a boss spawn on the left, you'll get a boss spawn on the right, you'll get a boss spawn way up here. But it's a very nice area because you can always keep moving towards the next boss. Um, so especially on, on blue stacks or other emulators where you have the map zoomed out, you can see where your next boss is and you can move towards it while killing your current boss. So it's actually re relatively low downtime between bosses for this area. Now, tier 7 zone opens up you get to cross the bridge and uh, Valhalla's Cradle is a, it's a tier 6 area in, in Northrin. By the way, we, we did miss a, a normal dungeon here, Giant's Abyss. Very nice uh, normal dungeon there in Jotunheim. Tier 6 area, we get two more dungeons. We get a Beast Den just here and we also get a Dragon Roost. Now, Dragon Roost is very nice for farming materials. Dragonite um, does open the fact. Tier 7, you know, you get Typhon, Tiamat. Hydras as well, which are, you know, the bane of pretty much every tier 7 class, except summoners maybe. So, Dragon Roost is very good, good chance to get weapon upgrades. The tier 7 area, Murkheim Mines, it's, it can be good, it can be bad. Uh, there is a bazaar in the town itself. Uh, when I say bad, the... The general routing, uh, you, there is quite a few bosses here, but if you get unlucky, you might have to go very far between between bosses. So, if you're lucky, you can, you know, you can visualize it here. You get a couple of bosses here, one here, so you get three bosses, boom, back to back, and then you might have to walk all the way down here, which does take some time, and then sometimes you have to go walk all across here. Uh, the the fact is at tier seven. You have the Colossus boss, uh, which hits very, very hard. You have Tiamat, which although you can sleep dart, the Wyvern pet hits hard, causes blight. You have Anku, which will more than likely resist all of your damage, can hit hard. Uh, what else do you have at tier seven around here? You know, those are the main bosses here. And it's going to be very tough to kill these guys immediately on reaching tier 7. So if you are a mage type class or you can wear mage gear, I do recommend picking up a Reaper's Robe uh, from, from an Anku if you can take one down. That will give you increased Orn gains straight away. Otherwise, for the majority of tier 7, uh, you're, you're probably actually going to be farming in Mountains of Jotunheim again, uh, trying to pick up um, Black Witch Staff if you're a mage or... Masamune, I mean, Masamune is a really annoying weapon for me. Just the attack is really low. And uh, so in terms of attacking weapons, you might you might have to try and get lucky from uh, from Anku. You really want to farm Ankus for uh, Deathbringer if you can. Um, anyway, on so yeah, Tier 7, it's kind of a mixed bag. There is a Chaos Portal in Tier 7, which is a very difficult dungeon, to be honest. Very high amount of berserks in there. But tier 8 is probably my favorite zone in the game uh, because you get this the Eastern Lioness Strip, which is this section here. So you get three bosses in this section. Uh, and if you watch my video on how I got world first tier 10, I kind of do some examples in there and exactly how I farmed this zone. But essentially you get three bosses that can spawn all the way from here uh to here which does seem like quite a large area but it's completely linear so if you you know exactly where the bosses are going to be if you don't see them on your map and you can do like reset 
party reset to try and kind of force spawn them n n close to you. Worst comes to worst, you literally traverse from east to west, back and forth, back and forth. And the tier eight bosses are actually, a lot of them they have kind of around five, six K health and relatively easy to take down. Uh, Heimdall also like double rewards of all the other bosses and likes to use ward skill. So again, quite easy to take down. Arguably uh, an easier zone than tier seven um, upon reaching tier eight. So this, this zone is actually where you're gonna farm from tier eight all the way to tier 10. Um, there is a battlegrounds dungeon here and a second battlegrounds dungeon here. Now the West Lioness zone is an absolute nightmare. It's, it's, it's really large. There's a lot of uh, obstacle kind of blocks which you cannot traverse and that you cannot reach other side of, even if you see bosses on the other side. Uh, this whole area here, like in the middle, uh, this area here, like if you get a boss spawning here, here, but you're over here, you know, it's going to take you like a minute to get across here, uh, which is uh, really annoying. I, I definitely recommend the East Lioness Strip. Um, and again, you should, you should, more than likely, if you can kill tier seven bosses, you're definitely going to kill tier eight. Bo tier eight bosses, like most most of them, have actually less health at tier eight than at tier seven, which is quite interesting. And again, um, recommend bringing like a damage pet, even if you're not a pet class, just to try and help help you get started into killing tier eight. Um, Fafnir drops the cursed monster tombs, which is going to be a huge uh, leveling boost to leveling speed. Again, also farming panaceas from Fafnir, so it's a really nice, and it's weak to dragon damage as well. Bear that in mind. Um, Heimdall drops Heimdall shield, which gives you stun immunity, plenty of ward. So definitely picking up one of those is a great option. Uh, Los Alpha Yord Lord has a staff with actually good offensive stats, both attack and magic. And for thief weaponry, you have uh, Rakul's blade. And Heimdall's Akir is uh, has ward on it as well. So tier eight, this is a great, great farming zone. Uh, will set you up nicely uh, for reaching kind of end game. Now the tier nine zone, uh, thematically probably my favorite zone. Practically my least favorite zone. It's it's an absolute nightmare. It's up and down. It's like zigzagging. You you can't reach bosses across all of the kind of blockable mountain zones. Uh, they are just way, way, way too thick. Um, the way gate is miles away from everywhere. The underworld portal is absolutely miles away from the way gate. Uh, even with the increased movement speed now, it's still miles and miles away. Um, the only kind of decent area I found trying to farm in, in Baylor was actually in the depths of Baylor zone here. Uh, but even here, it's like, it's kind of like a rib cage and you might get a boss down here. You might get a boss up here. You might get a boss over here. It's uh, it it takes a lot of reset to to kind of feel good, but it never ever will feel as good as the East Lioness Strip. So unfortunately, um, in terms of actually picking up gear here in Tier Nine, I almost just suggest ignoring Tier Nine, the the Tier Nine World Zone. Uh, you may you may well get tier nine gear from dungeons. That's probably the best place to do it. Uh, I'm I'm not convinced picking up a uh, farming for a venom, for example, is worth it. Um, I would just stick with a deathbringer uh, for thief types, uh, for melee types from uh, from Anku. Make sure you get a deathbringer because farming a venom here is gonna yeah it's just be an absolute nightmare. So honestly. From tier 8 all the way until tier 10, you're going to be farming the East Lioness Strip. And then finally, when you do reach tier 10, uh, you have fantastic zone, actually, Olympia Trails. Uh, basically, the best place I found so far is around this area here. So you, you, you can get bosses kind of dotted about, but very, very often you get bosses, you get multiple bosses uh, right next to each other here, here, or even down below here. But the fact is you can like circle this area, these kind of forest impassable places, you can kind of circle it, but you can reach across very often to get bosses. 
Um, so this is a very, very nice farming zone. Now, tier 10, you get the Valley of the Gods dungeon, which is a literal valley. Uh, super, super cool. Um, my favorite dungeon, really, in Aetheric. And you also get uh, a normal dungeon over here in the Lost Kingdom of Olympia. You get another normal dungeon there. So, yeah, from tier 10, in tier 10, you're going to be farming. The bosses at tier 10 are super juicy compared to uh, tier 9, tier 8. So that is this specific area here is where you want to be farming. So there we have it. That is my initial world map farming zone guide. I do like world farming in Aetheric. And uh, another general tip is you kind of, for farming for experience, you do want to be wearing uh, highest quality tombs that give highest experience as possible. Uh, you know, starting with Draconian Mages or uh, the Draconian Lord uh, drops your first monster tomb all the way up to kind of Fafnir at tier 8 with your cursed monster tomb. That's going to be a next really big upgrade. And then Arisen Fafnir is in tier 10. Uh, the tier 10 zone dropping Arisen monster tombs. That is kind of tomb goals, if you like. So, yeah, I really... Oh, there's a shrine. Shrine of Luck. Very nice. Yeah, always pick up the shrines when you can. Remember, the shrines do stack. Uh, so that can really increase your experience gains or in gains okay i hope you found the video useful for finding like the best farming zones again uh, basically you want to farm the highest tier world bosses that you can effectively kill easily that's going to be your best way to farm experience while doing dungeons uh, of your the tier that you can manage easily as well so if you've got any questions uh, please let me know i'll be doing uh, more and uh, leveling guides for Aetheric. And uh, so be sure to check those out. And as always, want to thank the Arisen Orna Legends uh, for supporting this channel, this Orna content train on my Patreon and Twitch, and everybody on Discord uh, supporting us there. Be sure to check out Orna Legends. We've got Hero of Aetheric chat rooms specifically set up for talking about Aetheric. And we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. I'm Shabash and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.